This is what we got. We got a quick rundown of the human immune system. So I was on Pinterest, yeah, Pinterest, and I saw this image, and I really liked it because it kind of scoped out and broke down the human immune system. So I kind of took their image, tweaked it, and then put it on my board for us to break down and analyze a little bit. Now, when it comes to the immune system, the human immune system anyway, one of the things you got to remember is this is your defense mechanism for working specifically with two different things. That's when the body is fighting pathogens and when it's dealing with damaged tissue. So some of these things you can see that will become an overlap with one another. Now, with the immune system, there's two parts to it. There's the innate immune system and then there is the acquired immune system. Some people refer to the innate immune system as the non-specific and then uh, you've got the acquired immune system which is also known as the specific. Now why is it called the non-specific and the specific? Well because innate doesn't care what the pathogen is it attacks it or it defends against it the exact same way. Doesn't matter who it is encroaching on the walls, it's going to defend the same way over and over again. That's good because if the defense works, then it's always going to work. The bad part about it is it doesn't have a memory. So there's no memory. Whoops, went off the board. There's no memory with innate. So It'll attack the same thing the same way even if it doesn't work versus acquired. It's specific. The cool thing is it has a memory. That's why when you get the chicken pox when you're seven years old, you wind up not getting the chicken pox again when you're 37 years old because acquired immunity has an actual memory to it. So let's kind of break these down just a little bit. If we start with acquired, remember this has a memory. It's also known as specific immunity, and it can be broken down into two categories. You've got cell-mediated and you've got humoral. Cell-mediated means that it's cell-to-cell -cell combat. So that means that it's going to deal with infections that deal directly with a body cell. In other words, you're going to have suppressor T cells, helper T cells, and cytotoxic T cells coming into actual physical contact with an antigen or an infected cell. This is where you find cells such as infected cells by a virus or abnormal cells like cancer cells. So we have helper T cells, cytotoxic T cells, suppressor T cells. These work in cell mediated attacks. There's no antibodies involved here. It's specifically cell-to-cell -cell combat. You're dealing with releasing cytokines, specified chemicals that either contact other cells or actually destroy infected cells and cause things like apoptosis, which is a mediated cell, cell death. The other side of acquired immunity is known as humoral. Now, humoral deals with B cells, and these B cells they make something called antibodies. Now, a favorite trick question amongst teachers is which makes antibodies, B cells or plasma cells? And here's the funny thing about it. In reality, the true answer is that plasma cells are the ones that make antibodies. B cells don't. Why? Well, because B cells have to be activated in order to become plasma cells, which then make your friends the antibodies. But in order for all of this to take place, you have to have antigen exposure happen. So guess what? With humoral defenses, you're not making any antibodies unless those B cells are specifically exposed to the antigen in question. That's why they give you a flu shot. They have to expose your B cells and they have to expose the rest of your immune system to the actual antigen in order for you to build up this defense. Once you're exposed, half of those cells are going to convert into activated plasma cells. So these guys are activated. We'll put that here. And the rest of them become clones. 
which are known as memory B cells. And these guys kind of stay in, in hiding. They're not activated, but you will pull those cells out again when you are exposed to the antigen a second time. So then you have the plasma cells that were already activated plus the memory B cells that are now activated, they create even more antibodies. And so your defenses against that, um, that original antigen is even stronger. And that's why when you get sick, it can last for several days. The next time you get sick, it doesn't last as long. And then it turns into a 24 hour bug in which you feel like crap for 24 hours. And then you wake up the next morning, you feel great. Why? Well, you've probably been exposed to this sickness in the past, and now you're building up a defense against it. Sounds like something that's a pretty lengthy process. It is. So with acquired immunity, it's great because it has that memory. You won't get sick the same way the next time. You have a better way to have a better defense. It takes less and less time to defend yourself against that, sick, that, that pathogen, but there is a time lag along with it that's anywhere from days to several days versus innate immunity stops it right where it is. Really, it wants to say, all right, look, we got three different areas. We've got physical barriers. We have defenses that are specified for the blood and tissues. And then we have area defenses. So um, your physical barriers are things like skin, mucus, saliva, urine, tears, and stomach acid. I bet you You've heard numerous times someone drops some food on the table and they say, oh, I'm going to eat it anyway because my stomach acid is going to kill it all. Well, you know, it, stomach acid is pretty potent. It's a very low pH. Remember, low pH is acidic. High pH is usually basic. So anything lower than seven is acidic. Anything higher than seven is basic. And your stomach is around in the range of about, you know, somewhere around pH of two maybe a little lower, sometimes a little higher, depending on what's in your stomach. So stomach acid is potent. But let me tell you how I got sick one time. A long time ago, I got food poisoning because of some ground beef. And wouldn't you know it, the ground beef was very old. They should have never served it. And they didn't mix it up very well. So they made these little meatballs. And inside the meatballs, the heat did not cook all the way through. So the E. coli in the middle of those meatballs... It was still cold. Those E. coli sat there and they, they were able to multiply inside that meatball. And I ate several of them. Needless to say, it was a very bad week. So stomach acid is only good once it reaches the actual pathogens. If it can't reach the pathogens, then guess what? Stomach acid didn't do its job. Tears, they wash pathogens out of your eyes. Urine washes it out of your tract. Saliva washes it out of your mouth. Mucus washes it out of your, your respiratory uh, system. Skin acts as a wall that keeps it from getting into your body overall. Do you see the trend here? These defenses are all about keeping things out. They don't attack anything. They're just keeping everything out. So if you're fortunate, which believe it or not, you're more fortunate than you think, these barriers keep things out 24-7. But sometimes things get beyond these barriers and they get into the body tissues and into the blood. If they make it into the blood and the tissues, you've got this list of white blood cells. What's funny is some people, they try to rush through that chapter on the blood in their classes and they don't learn those white blood cells. Well, guess what? This is just for you because you still got to know the white blood cells. Remember that neutrophils are the guys that attack bacteria, macrophages. Those are the big eaters. They're like cookie monster cells inside of your body. They engulf pathogens and and all types of other cellular debris. Basophils have a break-off cell called mast cells. These are the guys that actually they create things like histamine. And so they wind up making some chemicals that are going to help you with inflammation or actually help to create inflammation. Eosinophils, they fight parasites and natural killer cells. These are the guys that actually look for cells that have been infected and abnormal cells. Natural killer cells actually hunt down cancer cells inside of your body. Natural killer cells are some hilarious cells in the sense of how they got their names because back in the 70s, they first discovered natural killer cells and they didn't know what in the world they were. They just knew that they had found some cells inside of human bodies destroying human cells. They thought that this was gonna be like the onset of some George Romero nightmare to living dead situation. And so they kept it a secret from the public. 
until they found out that the natural killer cells were not indiscriminately killing normal cells. They were killing abnormal cells, cells that were infected with viruses and cells that were cancer cells. And so the name stuck, natural killer cells. All of these white blood cells are there to help deal with organism death. When they in approach a pathogen or an infected cell, it's all about killing it, not about catcher, capturing it. And unfortunately, not about establishing acquired immunity. These cells, they may be white blood cells, and all those T cells and B cells are lymphocytes, and they're types of white blood cells. These white blood cells are not about creating a memory. They don't have a memory of what they fought. So neutrophils will fight a bacterium today, same bacterium show up tomorrow, it will have no recollection of it. It will not adapt its defenses due to what it just encountered. It will fight the same way every day, all day. Versus these guys over here with T cells and B cells, they deal with something called a direct kill. So not only are they destroying those cells, but they're also establishing a memory of what you encountered so that they can erect a stronger, better, more efficient and faster defense. The last part of your innate immunity is known as uh, you know, body coverage, and that deals with inflammation and fever. Inflammation is local, so we'll put local here, and fever is body-wide. So inflammation says, hey, there's a local area where a pathogen has just moved in, so let's say you get a cut on your hand, and you don't disinfect the cut. Well, needless to say, the body will immediately move in with inflammation. The damaged cells in the area will release chemicals that will send signals to the surrounding cells, which will probably reach out to some basal fields, and those basal fields will then release histamine and heparin. Histamine and heparin will then cause an inflammatory effect. That's what causes increased local blood flow to the local area. That local blood flow will then also stimulate cells to release chemicals to cause uh, the capillaries to increase uh, perfusion which will allow more fluids to exit your blood and into the tissues, which will cause the swelling. Blood is like 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, so that increases the heat. So now there's the warmth. There's also the increased redness of the area due to the increase of blood flow, which the increased temperature will increase the metabolism of the surrounding cells to help clean up this mess. That's all with inflammation. Fever, however, is body-wide. Fever is just jacking up the temperature of your body, uh, you know, anything over 99.1 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you get over 99.1 degrees Fahrenheit, you are considered an individual with a fever and your body is simply trying to nuke the pathogens. Because a high temperature will actually decrease the metabolic processes of a pathogen in your body. And that's what you really want to do. You want to decrease the metabolic processes of a pathogen in your body because more than likely a pathogen in your body is actually trying to replicate itself. I mean, in the movie Aliens, you had one chest buster pop out of a person. Can you imagine if aliens in those movies were like viruses and they created, uh, let's say, about 500 of themselves in one person and then burst out? That movie would last like three minutes, you know? It will kill the entire crew of the spaceship. No one would ever go to see those movies uh, because everybody would just die quickly instead of die slowly. So uh, right now what you have here is you're hunting it down and you're saying, hey, until we can really get to it, let's use a fever to do an overall cooking of the body, reduce the metabolic process of the pathogens, and therefore speed up the metabolic process of these other white blood cells here so we can hunt them down and destroy those pathogens. And that, folks, is your immune system in just under 15 minutes. Deuces.